Welcome to the sixth episode of the XC Restoration, and this is going to be the last uh, episode of the metalwork. Um, and I'm spending about 10 15 minutes just on the engine cross member because it's not an unusual repair to have to do on these cars, and I just wanted to go through a little bit of it with you because there's a few complexities there along the way. So we'll spend a bit of time on that, and of course, then next video we can look at cleaning up the body, getting it ready for painting, and all that sort of stuff. There's still a fair bit of metalwork to do. I just don't want to go into too much detail, I'll make it boring if I can avoid it. Right. I want to talk about parts. Parts, parts, parts. Alright, bought a couple of parts I don't need yet. Although I will need this fairly soon. Now this is a steering box, a power steering box, fully reconditioned. Um, now these things normally are around $350 plus your core. And if you need to buy one, an old one, to, to send in as a changeover, it's going to end up costing about $450 all told. This was from a place in Dandenong, $250 completely reconditioned, uh, no core necessary. And the guy had quite a few and he's looking to get rid of some, so I scored there. So I grabbed it while I could. In fact, when the shell's painted, which should be by Easter, that will be the first thing I'll put in because I do want to check the length of the steering column. The other thing, of course, aluminium water pump, same sort of thing. I've got on the old uh, XW there. This was very, very cheap. I think this was $60 or so. And of course a Carter fuel pump, which is again the same as I used on the XW, $42. So, as I said before, with the wheels, I think they were 42 bucks as well. You grab things when you can. And a couple of other parts I've purchased. I showed out $100 for a pair of engine mount plates, which look a bit manky and so forth, but they'll clean up well. And also a drag link. So I needed one of them because the last genius that had this car sort of docked it off there. So we can't do much about that, but we have the new part and we can get it ready to put on the car. And of course the other thing I bought was a flex home, uh, that's it there. There were two types of engine homes the home handyman can use, there's the tri-stone one here which is this one here and these are great, the only issue with these is they tend to leave, if there's even the slightest uh, ridge, they'll tend to leave that area underneath the ridge where the ring goes, the top ring goes, um, unhoned if you know what I mean, these are far better for that sort of thing. If there is a ridge of course you've got to use a ridge remover or get the thing reboard. this is pretty good like that, it doesn't really need it. Um, the flex zones are available in three grids, 180, 240, I think 320. And because this engine isn't getting rebored, uh, I'm using cast rings. And cast rings are better with an unboard engine. They bet they bed in, sorry, better. Um, and different manufacturers of rings, for example, Hastings used like to use 240 grit, that sort of thing. So different manufacturers of rings have uh, different uh, requirements. Whatever the case, I'll go into this sort of thing more when I do the engine. When you bore, or when you hone, sorry, your engine, you have to make sure you wash the thing with hot soapy water and get every single bit of grey lint out with a white um, lint-free cloth uh, because if you don't, it acts as a sort of a carper on them and, and wears your rings prematurely. So I'll go into this sort of thing more later. I'm also collecting bits and pieces for the engine. Um, one thing I did want to talk about with these gallery plugs, there's two here, there's two up the front, and they can be absolutely hellish to get out. I had a 429 big block and even a machine shop had a lot of trouble getting them out, heated them up and ended, ended up destroying them. This is a snap-on 8mm hex drive, like an Allen key thing. It's a very snug fit and it worked. So I can get those out, run the brushes all through there, make sure they're clean. But I'm not ready in this uh, chapter to go through anything on the engine. I'm just going to um, save that for the next one. So I've been a bit slack, I've been doing lots of welding on this car and only just removed the headlining. Now it's important to keep these because we can use these as a pattern uh, for making the new headlining or at least give it to somebody to, uh, to stitch up. Some of the ones, or at least the one I bought from the XW, or for the XW I should say, didn't fit um, because the pattern wasn't terribly good that the, the gentleman used. Now, looking at the turret you can see it is absolutely gorgeous, look at that really really good condition and so again you know I've, I've I've struck a win with this car you know I I look at lots and lots of bits and pieces that haven't been fiddled with and it's absolutely flawless so I can leave that I'm not going to paint that it's gray you know none of the sweet creams up there the sort of sweet cream started halfway up the B pillar but I am having a little bit of trouble with this because I reckon it's probably a good idea to keep it its original color I'm just not all that keen on it um, and also there's a, a limit to what sorts of interior colours we can pick for it. Now I've got a dusk one I haven't picked up yet and you can't put a dusk or a pale blue interior on a sweet cream car. I reckon it might look a bit silly. 
And so these traditionally, most of them had an ochre interior, which was that orangey colour that the headlining was. So still pressing forward and uh, hopefully sooner than later <coughs> I can clean it up underneath and uh, give it a bit, shoot a bit of paint on underneath just to make it look nice, get rid of all that grease and grime and uh, start uh, finishing up on the engine bay. I've also cut that out um, and I have to find the right size hole for that. That was the one that went in behind the shocker tower there, it's got a bit of filler over it. And in order to ascertain the hole I'm just going to use this and what's sort of funny about this, I don't know if you can see there, it says Peter Anderson 10B. Now 10B was, <laughs> when I was at Yarra Valley in year 10, and that was in 1982. So I'm going to use this to mark my hole. Well, I'm just taking off all the primer and all the paint that was put there before. One thing that does concern me a little bit is it doesn't look like any of this primer was etched. It was just sort of thrown all over, um, and that's not a good thing. You need to use an etch primer, to, which has a phosphoric acid component which bites into the metal so your, your paint sticks properly. The best etch primers, of course, are the two-pack, the 408-type etch primers, and they'll throw them straight on the bare metal. Any filling on top of it goes on top of it. Then they uh, block back and etch again, and that's the only really good way to do it, and that's the proper way to do it. But the problem is here, I'm at home and I don't have a booth. Uh, I don't want to poison all the local residents and cats and dogs and all that sort of stuff. So this bloke hasn't used it, so all of his work has to come off. So I'm in the middle of doing that now. What's particularly that of a worry is things like this. Now he hasn't used a sanding disc, he's used a grinding disc and he's bitten into it all and so it's undulated. And that means that I've got to wire brush all that out, that all has to come out. Um, you can see there he's done that and it's a bit of a mess even here that squiggly line sort of down here is where he's taped his grinder off. But that's not a sanding disc, that's a grinding disc. I've recut the uh, hole there for the fuel line and also um, sort of taken out this horrible bit of metal just cut that out and put fresh metal in and put another hole down there and that's for the uh, the front brake line so I'm just taking all of this old filler and all this uh, old paint and primer and everything off to see exactly what the metal is like underneath mm -hmm. so all the previous owners filling work has to be removed so it's all got to come out there uh, this stuff's the sort of the new stuff that I've done that blue is just a fine filler Still toiling away at this thing. Should have probably had the body blasted, but um, I just wanted to do it myself. Now you can see the engine number or the chassis number there. I can focus. I can't see through this um, thing here. Now on the XWs and XYs, I don't know about XYs. On the XW anyway, that's just um, sort of left in primer, if you know what I mean. They sort of prime it, but they put tape over it and so forth, and then cut the number now. What I want to do with that is I'm going to leave it in bare metal and just clear that area there because it looks like the last owner's really ground away at it and they've made the number quite hard to see and by the time it's high filled it'll be virtually invisible. So I'm going to clear that, I'm going to tape it neatly and clear it. There's a, a big spot weld there which is sort of in the way of it a bit but I reckon that's the way to go with that. I don't want any um, knockbacks from Vic Roads if it ever needs to go there. I want it really visible. Wish I had a dollar for every time I climbed in here. Oh. There are little sort of ripples and that sort of thing which is normal for the pressing process. I'm leaving all that. This car's supposed to look standard. The way I put that patch in is beautiful. You can't feel anything there so I'm sort of slowly getting there. I'm on the wrong angle for where the camera is but um, I'm slowly getting there. But it's um, a process that I, I just want it to look good. So I'm pretty happy with the firewall. I've sort of re-sanded bits and pieces there, just over some of the welds. I've just got a tiny bit of filler there. And also around where the loom is, I've blocked off a couple of little holes. I've left all the factory divots for 6 and V8 cars and air conditioning and standard cars. So I'll leave a ladder dog to all this too. So there's work to be done yet. Oh, the phone's ringing, I'm not going to make it in time. These sorts of curves can be quite complicated to do because I've been using a little block, little blocks like that to do the straight areas and sometimes these ones here can be quite complicated. 
Let's get there though. I'm really happy with this car. It's sort of taking up a lot of time, more time than I thought to do some of this sort of stuff. And uh, I didn't know there'd be so many grinder marks and it'd be such a mess. That's a bit rough in there actually. But I'm gonna high fill the whole thing and then rub it back. And so it should, redo around there too, so it should end up looking really, really good. I just wanted to get it all in one colour because it's easier to see imperfections. There's some there for the fill. I sort of knew they were there. A couple here. Um, look, it doesn't have to be perfect because they never were. Um, they were quite wavy when they were new. But at least then it sort of looks like it's all one piece and, uh, and any future repairs can be easily seen. So I've sort of put it in a bit of primer, a bit of, bit of edge and a bit of high fill. Then I can sort of rub it back and play with it and fill little bits and pieces and then sort of forget about it, but mainly is to seal off that um, bare metal. And I've still got to do around here on this side, I've got to put the battery tray in and weld a bit there, so it'll seal that off for now, it does it quite well. Um, if it's in primer for any length of time, I can always just wipe it off, because I, I only put it on quite thin, or thinly, so um, I can take it from there, but so far so good. Alright, we're looking at Jason's XW now. We've got all the uh, electric tailgate wiring sorted out. This all works well. We've got a safety switch all hooked up in there, so that's all good. Check out the workmanship. Jason's done a beautiful job. Going through to the dash, he's got the beautiful GT slash GS dash. That's a GT one, isn't it? Yep. Oh, it's a grey, yeah. All looking good. Look at the paint job. It's better than mine. We're just having a bit of trouble with the clock. It's making a loud sort of relay type noise. I don't know why, if it's getting a back feed anywhere, but it shouldn't be. That's all looking really, really good. Moving forward, engine bay, having a bit of trouble with washers in that they're not actuating properly. But we've put an extra set of feeds in, which I think I mentioned in the last video, for a bottle down there if he wants to use an electric pump on that. There's the relay there for the electric tailgate. It's all looking absolutely schmick. That's a feed for the driving lights down there. And it really is looking beautiful. Are you happy, mate? I'm delighted, my friend. Yep, we're all good. Yep. Excellent. Look at the roof. Now he's bought a um, roof rack for this car and he's having second thoughts. He doesn't want to put it in because he doesn't want to drill holes in that roof and frankly I don't blame him because that's as straight as an arrow. This car really is gorgeous. Beautiful. Right, well I'm back from Jason's place now and I'm going to start tackling this cross member down here. Oh. There's still a bit of cleaning up to do in this area here. I've sort of been digging filler out. This was all, well, down in this area, it was all full of bog. So I've been sort of cleaning this out. Not finished yet. That's not uh, clean enough to, um, to do anything. And also, I've got to uh, start welding the, um, what do you call it? The battery uh, tray bracket onto the shocker tower as well. But we need to cut this out. That's just no good to use. And I've got this lovely one here out of that donor car and you can see he's cut all that out there's um oh my knees there's a plate i've got to cut out at the bottom that flat plate and put the box type one on that the v8's had the um i don't know if the six cylinder xc's had them but i know the um the v8's did because this car's got one and there's the bracket there and that's actually quite handy because it's got that um hole and so i know precisely where it goes so that's all got to be taken off and cleaned up Right, well I'm under the XW now, and you can see this cross member extension here. 
Can we see it? There. Now, the 6s had a flat one, so did the 302s. It was only the GTs um, that had that sort of box section one there. And I've started very carefully cutting this one out. And I was careful not to cut back here because that's a support there. This is triple skin, remember? Same on the other side, but I could pretty much chomp the old one out. And you can see, hang on, this is the XCV8 one, and that's a box section one too. It's different from the X WXY one, and of course, our six cylinder XB one's there. So I'm going to take this off here. And I'm going to put that on, but I'll put that on last, as I said before. Don't know if this is salvageable. I might be able to salvage it. If not, there's only one place that uh, supplies them, and they're around $55, which is no big deal if I need one. Oh, my daughter's here. Hmm. Well, I've been very rough, and I've just sort of opened this thing up. And I'll just take this scraper and clean all that muck out and see if I can salvage this. I might be able to salvage it. This one's fairly straight, so I reckon I can reuse that. There's nothing wrong with it, it's not rusty or anything like that. I've just, just with some basic hand tools, sort of knocked it into shape, but I think I'll leave it at that and use that again. Now, when I undo all this, when I end up getting all this off and I've just got the bare cross member, I'm going to take this part out. But I'm not going to weld that on yet, just on the off chance when I weld this in it sort of distorts it. I want it to keep it dead straight and then put that in later. It's very easy to, to weld this on in the car later now. X, what are they? XWs and XYs are actually narrower. The cross members won't fit in an XAB and C. The shocker towers are actually a little bit wider apart. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take these bits off. I'm going to have a bare cross member and then I can take the one out of the car, weld this in, and then I'll put that on later. That's actually easy to do because you can do it all from above. Now I'm just, I'm going to be careful when I drill through these that I don't go through. I just want to go down to this this sort of level here, take all that metal off on the car, I can just drill straight through it because I'm going to dispose of that cross member, put this in position and sort of plug, plug weld it in. So that's where we're at at the moment. I've got to keep going and we'll see how we go. Oh, that's gone. So I'll just sort of hammer and dolly it back into shape. go on here. I'll just get the flapper disc and clean all that off. There's still a bit of metal there I'll get rid of and after that it should look pretty good. Right now removing these cross members is a bit of a pig. I've got this side out here that's all sort of cleaned up. That's a little bit wavy this area here but I can fix that. That's easy. Now here's the side I haven't done yet and you can see the way I've done it is I've just docked through the cross member here, then I've sort of dog-legged it around like that. Um, and so the reason for that is so I can drill out, there's about six spot welds here. Um, there's also one up there I've forgotten to mark up, and there's also two up where the engine plate goes. Now what that'll do is it'll release this side, and I can knock that out, um, and it's only held on by a little, little tiny bit there. And so I can break it off, and then work on getting this part out here. Now that part there is a real pain. Now if I come around here, these are line welded or stitch welded down here. There's one continuous weld and I'll cut that a little bit further back, not too much because I want to release it. Now there are a couple of spot welds through here but they don't release that inner skin. What's the case is that the cross member is spot welded to this inner part here and then that part spot welded on later, this part here. And so if you drill out the spot welds along here, it doesn't necessarily release it. And that's what I found on the other one and also this one here as well. So I'm going to get to work and take this part out of, where is it, this part out here. And try not to distort it too much. And then I can work on getting that out. And once that's out, I can bolt the new one up through these two holes with a couple of 3 8 bolts. Tack it in position up here. And then I can sort of level all this part out here, sort of straighten all that bit out there. Now whenever I drill spot welds, I always put a little 1 8 pilot hole through them first to give the bigger drill something to hang on to. I'll probably only get these central. Oh, 
They just cut out much easier, and I don't have to sol salvage this piece, so I can just go straight through. Where the other one, I wanted to uh, keep that in one piece without holes in it so I could plug weld it. It's probably the wrong way to do it. I just put a really aggressive cut on this. Well, this bit's had it anyway, so I sort of sharpened it with a massive um, pitch on it. But it makes light work of an unpleasant job. Come on, you son of a gun. It's hard on the camera. And nothing goes right, but this one seems to be. Oh, here we go. The other one was a pig. That is the first time I've turned a camera on while I'm doing something that's worked out well. Hang on a minute. And see, this only leaves a little bit here. Let me just take this out. And I've got to salvage this bit for the cross member because it was cut off without that bit there, so I'll sort of weld it onto the new cross member and put a plate behind it to brace it. I'll just try and twist this and get it off. And what that does is that is by using a, a, a drill slightly oversized, it means these will just release without distorting all of this. The other side was already a little bit bent. I'm just gonna remove that. God. There we go. Okay, so what we've got is a lovely clean area here. Nice and clean up the top, it's not distorted at all. We've got to take this out now, and this is a pain because I think that's a stitch. Yeah, that's been welded there too. So this is a pain, this bit here. This is the hardest bit of the whole thing because we can't drill it out from the front, as I said before. And when it cleans up with a wire wheel so I can try and locate the spot welds and pop them out, these ones over here, you can't get a drill behind it. Unless I go through there, I guess. I don't know. I've just got to sort of fiddle with that and figure it out. This is what I'm talking about. There's a spot weld there. Whoa there. We can't get to the other side of that because it's inside that housing there and there's also one here and it looks like there's one there too. I think that's all. Plus we're sort of welded across the front. That's easy. I can just get the cut off disc and just run down there just about not even an eighth of an inch and that'll get rid of all that snot there and it's just this one here. So I might try and cut that, drill these two and then just sort of twist it off there and clean it up with the die grinder. Well, I've been getting ready to put this in. It's been cut here, and that's where there's a sort of a reinforcement bar that goes on. So I've salvaged these off the old cross member, and they sort of get welded in like that. I've done the other side there, and also put a plate in the back to reinforce it. So that's almost ready to go in now. Right, I'm ready to start putting this in now. I've cleaned it all up, added these bits to it, a couple of reinforcing plates. I reckon she's ready to go in. I've just got a jack sitting under there for now to hold it in place. You can see these holes line up quite well, but the top ones aren't, so it's got to sort of be bent back a little bit. Um, also, we need to make sure everything's in place properly before we weld it in, because once it's there, it's there to stay. But so far, it's not looking too bad. Once that's all bolted in, I wanted to, to sort of jack it into position. I'm going to take it out again, because I've got to clean behind here a little bit more with the um, sanding disc. But once it's in position here, and I can see how it goes, I can bolt those parts in, then remove the jack, and that'll sort of true it up a little bit against those plates. So we're not quite there yet. I just want to make sure all of this stuff's checked out before I weld it, because once it's in, it's in for good. Dad, I yeah. am completely ready for your noise. Cool. Right, what we've done is we've bolted it up, first put the jack under, got the position of it right, bolted these up, plug welded in so it's nice and level. Um, I haven't done these, I'll clamp these and do these as well, as well as around the back. So it's just sort of clamping and doing a weld, clamping and doing a weld, just to make sure that it's all, um, it's all kosher. Uh, whatever the case, if you do decide to weld, don't wear shorts. And don't drink tea. Mm. So I'm just going slowly with it, just to make sure it's all good. 
<coughs> and nice and strong. We'll take those bolts out in a second and uh, keep going. Still going. Looking pretty good though, I'm fairly happy with it. Right, well now I've got the cross member in, all secured up, all done. Bit of cleaning up to do yet, because uh, some of the welds are a little bit rough on the edges, so I'm just going to do that. And we can put this thing in now. And this thing was sort of more rear, more rear most. Um, so, you can see the archway there, where that little archway is. So I can clamp that up and, and put it in now. And what that'll do is it'll give that whole cross member a lot more rigidity. Well, I've got the cross member all in and done. Now, I'm just going to mock up this battery tray. This is out of a... Well, Jason's car again. And I'm just sort of running a 516th course tap through these. I've taken that off that bit of shocker tower he gave me. I can just sort of mount it under there, bolt it up, and see precisely where it all goes. Um, so I've just got to fettle with that a little bit more. I might loosen these ones down here so I can sort of shift it around a bit. Sounds like Mr. Whippy's around. One thing that's puzzling me is this radiator support, whether or not it's been cut. Now that looks factory to me. Um, my mate Jason reckons that was cut out later because it's quite messy in this area here. But I know Ford aren't always tidy, but it's sort of radius. And the guy that did the work on this car before, well he wasn't very good and he wasn't very tidy. But I'm wondering whether that's factory. I know there's different widths of radiator. So I've got to sort of figure that out. But anyway, the cross member's all in and finished. Um, there are cosmetic bits and pieces, you know, a little bit of filling, a little bit of sanding, particularly on that firewall. Battery clamp brackets all mocked in, or all welded in, down under there. So um, I can clean all this up further, edge prime it and then fill it. So I've spent a few hours today on it, which is good. Here goes Mr Whippy again. And I'm pretty happy with what I've achieved. There's a little bit more to do yet, but... We're not looking too bad. So I've started cutting out of the A-pillar. Now this is um, a couple of little rust holes there, but there's good thick metal either side of it, um, which, is, which is a good sign. And this is obviously just water that's collected behind the seal, but I wanted to take that out. I'm not finished taking that out. I've got to sort of unbutton it along here and sort of remove that part there. Then I can sort of make up a patch and the same down there as well. Um, done these bits of guttering. I've still got a sort of smooth them out a little bit but that's all sort of done and dusted and I've got those in so I'm happy about that and of course when you do start fabricating roof guttering or drip railing or whatever you want to call it use a set of calipers and that way you can get the sort of the, the, the height of it right because if you get that wrong and paint the thing and go to put your drip rail mouldings on um, and they don't fit it becomes a hassle so it's always good to sort of use tools like that to get them right the first time and because for the A-pillar repairs, I'm using some 1.2mm sheet stock. So uh, that'll be a little bit stronger than the other stuff I've been using, which is a tiny bit thinner. But um, being structural, I need to replicate what Ford have used there. So that's about all I've got time for in this video. In the next one, we're going to be still cleaning up bits and pieces here and there. There's, you know, it's not very good there. and There's a few scratches and marks, all that sort of stuff. So the next video is going to be more about um, getting it ready for paint, that sort of thing. So... Haven't got much more time in this one. We've reached half an hour. That's about where I like to leave them. Um, but I will make this video the last of the metalwork ones. I think if you make too many of those, um, we can sort of lose a bit of interest along the way. So hopefully this is this is all good um, and you've enjoyed this one. It has been quite a complicated one with the metalwork and so forth. But uh, on that note, have a lovely Christmas and wonderful and prosperous New Year. And I'll see you later. Ta-da.